I apologize this follow-up video is a little late, but between a free-handed resin toddler and more diamonds and gems than a Jared's, there were speed bumps everywhere. Like seriously, Harleys, I love y'all, but we gotta talk about you throwing your mom's jewelry all over the car for that prom night drop-off flex. For this tutorial, I'm going under the presumption you've seen the previous one, so you'll know the general gist of how to apply the domino effect. It's roughly the same approach for one of the vehicles, but with enough added nuance to warrant this follow-up. We'll be doing this with a Star Weaver, but this can easily be applied to the bikes. Eldar vehicles are known for being dirty, fast, and maneuverable, but we'll focus on the former, since portraying the latter will require more glitter and fluffing than the entire Vegas Strip. Wingtip trails are a popular indicator for high aerial speed, so we'll make those the longest effect trails. The engines will be two more, and then the rest of the effect will trail the back of the Star Weaver like it does with the regular troop. For a mental image, it'll kinda look like the pressure waves as jets cross the sound barrier, but we won't go that overboard or the effect really will swallow the model. As for the passengers, it's your discretion if you want them to have the domino effect too, but I recommend keeping it very light or it's going to look busier and more confusing than a New York City subway. Complex or not, it's still going to be a process for a pretty but fragile result. With the added benefit of taking up more storage space than that backlog you said you were going to clear three years ago. Your mileage will definitely vary on this one, but the end look can be well worth it for display purposes. In addition to the basic items of PVA glue, cotton balls, tweezers, and iridescent flames, you're going to need a few more goodies. Clippers, scissors, an X-Acto knife or file, random objects to hold the model at different angles while things dry, and a support structure to help keep long trails of cotton balls from drooping more than eyelids during your average PowerPoint. Toothpicks or barbecue skewers could work, but for flexibility, cost, and strength, it's really hard to beat the humble cotton swab. I was originally going to use the handy paperclip, but PVA adheres very poorly to it and slides right off. There is super glue, but the idea of super Super glue, cotton tufts, and your fingers sounds about as messy and not fun as cleaning a truck stop bathroom armed only with wet paper towels and a sudden hatred for life. Plus, the humble Q-tip has built-in scaffolding. Just pinch the end and voila! I also recommend an epoxy like JB Plastic Weld over super glue. It takes longer to set, but it'll give a stronger bond and won't off-gas like super glue. Regardless of what epoxy or glue you choose, just remember this design will always be fragile and finicky. It's going to survive the bumps of travel, not your whole cat demanded attention. Assuming you have your Star Weaver or jet bike ready and preferably varnished, we can finally start the process. Tear the cotton balls into strips. You can make thicker and longer ones this time around since we'll have more working room, and I found I wound up making more as I went along anyway. Cut a few Q-tips to different sizes just in case you like one length over another when dry fitted. And if you want the velocity to be more exaggerated than an Airsofter's War Story, you can always cut more fluff rods and glue them together for extra length. Now before we attach the sticks to the underwing, be aware that the wing curves at an angle so the final result won't be perfectly straight. It's best to pinch where the two will be connected, then bend it into shape, but I wound up having to adjust after the epoxy set anyway. Just be really careful when applying pressure of any sort. Harleys are fragile. One example is the top shuriken cannon. Also before epoxying, be sure to use the knife or file to scrape paint away for better adhesion. The cotton streaks and flakes will help cover any damage. Those discarded tips from earlier can be used to both apply and mop up epoxy. Now's the time to get those random objects to hold the rods at the right angle for drying. It's better to do multiple glue sessions rather than all at once. Once that's set, coat the Q-tip shafts with glue and cover them with cotton. This will be the foundation for all the layers to follow. I also added smaller strands along the wing to build up the mirage behind the aircraft. Always be sure to allow the glue to dry before moving on. I mean, unless you like more mess and frustration, don't let me tell you how to live your best life. Take the PVA glue and start brushing the strands in the direction of the effect trail. Do a few at a time, starting from the wing's edge, then sprinkle the iridescent flakes on. This will take aggravatingly long, but be patient and carefully correct any drooping. You've entered the long, repetitive phase of the operation, and while it's similar to the troops, here's a bunch of pointers on how to tackle the vehicle-sized effect. You'll find as you swap between glue in the bottom and top of the strips, the effect's general shape will start to flatten out or compact. This is fixed by adding thicker tufts on top of the already dried layers, then gluing flakes to those too. If the flakes themselves are too flat, then like the smaller clowns, add more glue and angle flakes with tweezers. The more varied, the cooler the look. 
you're definitely gonna want to put the vehicle down, so that's where the random objects come in handy again. Or whatever it can lean on, really. So take a well-earned break and come to terms with the fact your workstation is going to look like a cheap stripper danced on it for seven hours. If you apply too much effect or wish to sculpt the shape, the clippers and scissors can be used to help trim the effect towards a better tapered look. Trimming also helps remove any odd rounded appearances. Things look pretty good like this, but your gut says it can still be way better. Like seeing the drop pods open and the flesh terrors pop out. You get an extra failsafe if you varnish the model. You can use a wet brush to wipe away glued flakes to further groom the area. I added the passengers at the end, then decided to apply only a bit onto the weapon, but you can glam them up if you'd like. It really is a repetitive process of sculpting and grooming, but by the end, hopefully you've finessed it enough so the 80s won't call an Asford or Disco Ball back. I mean, it's going to look like a Disco Meteor by the end of it, but you want the floaty thing to still be discernible, you know? Thanks for stopping by, have a f***ing awesome day, and I'll see See you next time.